so. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of... Streamy Streams with TJ, where tonight we're going to be creating the characters of your deepest, darkest fantasies. Or something like that. So, um... For the past, oh god, four days or something like that, I have not worked less than a 12-hour shift. Um, I have stayed, on average, an hour and a half to two hours extra every night I have worked, simply because that was what was necessary. Um, so when I got home tonight, I was unbelievably tired uh, and had no idea what I wanted to stream. Uh, so, I got this crazy idea. One of the things I do as a dungeon master for D&D Encounters is I have pre-generated characters that I hand out to my players um, if they don't have a character. Um, and I make all my own characters. I don't use other people's characters because I enjoy making characters. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and so I had this weird idea. What if I made a few characters uh, for you guys? Um... My goal is to eventually have a pre-made character of every single class in 5th edition. I have 8 of, I think, 12, I think is the total in here. Let me actually look. I've got my, my lovely player's handbook. If you don't have one, you should get one because it's amazing and awesome. Um, let me go in here real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. So there's 12 character classes. I have 8 characters thus far. So I figured I've got 4 characters that I need to make left. Why not make some with you guys? And uh, isn't it nice? The the artwork in the PHB is so, so nice. Like, let me see if I can show you some guys some, some really cool stuff. Uh, so this is, again, a little bit hard to see. That's the ranger artwork uh and it's just it's just full i have the monster manual too and it's just full of amazing awesome awesome artwork um so yeah anyway so i'm uh i'm gonna be doing that and uh you guys can kind of comment on the stuff that you want to see and uh yeah uh the nice thing about fifth edition uh is they have a pdf that you can edit for character creation, so you don't actually have to write it all by hand, which is how I'm going to be doing this tonight. So without any further ado. So this is what it looks like. Um, if you guys are having a hard time reading it or anything, let me know and I'll adjust the zoom so you can read everything. Uh, but this is the basic D&D &D, uh, character sheet. As you can see, it's got your name and class and level background, blah, blah, blah. I'll explain all this as, as, as uh, we keep, uh, as we go. Um, but yeah, so you can see it's it's really nice. I actually, um, they have a lot of different options as far as uh, character sheets you can use. Like, I think they have three or four different front pages uh, uh, and another two or three different uh, sheets that have other stuff on them. Um, I built this PDF myself, uh, just smudging together a couple of the different pages, because this is how I like my character sheets. Uh, on the top here is just, this is the sheet that I use the most with my characters, because it has most of the stuff you will use every day. It has your skills here, this is where your weapon attacks will be, uh, this is where I put my uh, features and feats and other stuff like that, this is where all my equipment goes, this kind of describes my character, and this is the stuff you use in combat. Your armor class, your initiative, your speed, hit points, temp hit points, uh, all this stuff. This is death save throw stuff. So this has all the important stuff. And then here is where I can list every single, blah, 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 every single spell I know. And they actually have this thing where if I click on it, uh, for um, classes like the wizard where they have to prepare, they'll have uh, close to double the amount of spells uh, that they know uh, than they can prepare. So you can just click on this, or if you're playing on a tabletop, you can just color it in. Whenever you prepare a spell, you know which spells you have prepared at the beginning of every day. So kind of cool. 
Um, so this is the spell casting sheet. There's one other sheet that I never use, uh, but it's got a lot of background stuff. Um, I just I, I don't need that when I play. Um, so yeah. So I'm gonna get open up my PHB, and uh, so when I build a character, I generally start by picking the class and then I go back to the race uh, just because there's certain races that give you bonuses to uh, like um, what is it I think Wood El uh, uh, is it Wood Elves? I don't know um, like halflings get a bonus to dexterity so if I'm building a dexterity based class I might choose halfling simply because it uh, would help uh, so yeah I, I generally start by choosing my class first so I have a bunch like I said I've got a ton of characters already pre-built so I have to find one that I actually haven't done paladin druids ranger I don't have a ranger yet I don't think let me check to make sure Give me just a couple seconds here while I look through. I've got a cleric, a pally, a monk, a fighter, a druid, a barbarian, bard, and warlock. So I do not have a ranger. So we are going to build a ranger. All right, so we're going to go ranger, level one. Uh, I always leave player name blank because, again, I just hand these out to random people. Um... So yeah, so we got Ranger level one. Let's go back to the races. And see that's the pretty picture from the Ranger. Uh for those of you that don't know, Rangers are uh, uh I guess nature based fighter type things. Um there generally tends to be two different ways you can build a ranger. You can build them um, to be uh, long ranged, where they they tend to use like a longbow or a short bow, depending on you know their proficiencies and things like that. Uh, and they stay afar and just snipe people off. Or you can build them to just wade into um, the fight, uh, normally using two weapons. One of the primary features of a ranger is the ability to dual wield weapons. Um, so you can go either way. I think I might build... Uh, I I like dual wielding. Green Ranger dual wield. Yeah. I like dual wielding. I think it's really, really cool. Um, the character that I've built for myself that I, I will play when I get a chance uh, to play um, is a paladin. Uh, he's a dual wielding human paladin named Soren. Uh, and I just, I think dual wielding is really, really cool. So that's what we're going to do for right now. So we're going to start with Ranger and let's see. So uh, I'm going to actually lift off the different races. And I'm going to let you guys kind of uh, point me in the right direction. So the races that are in the official player's handbook are Dwarf, Elf, Halfling, Human, Dragonborn, Gnome, Half-Elf, Half-Orc, and Tiefling. So, what would you guys like to see this ranger? I figure I've got an audience. Why not let them, uh, let you guys uh, basically help me create this character? Um... So yeah, what are you guys thinking? What uh, which which one of those races do you guys uh, do you guys like the most? Uh, the traditional ranger uh, tends to be an elf. Elves are very popular rangers, um, just because it kind of fits with the lore behind elves. They're they're uh, nature based creatures. Uh, depending on which version you're talking about, um, they tend to get a bonus to dexterity in general, which is a big ranger thing. Um, I just realized I have no idea how many actual viewers I have. Uh, oh, cool. Elias says he's on his way. Very cool. Um, sorry, I'm just, uh, oh, I need to go to the right page here. 
Hold, please. I'm just, I'm bringing up the stream to see, uh, first of all, if I'm actually streaming, uh, which is always fun. I have one person watching now. That makes me feel great. All right, let's open this up and see what I got. Yeah, me and R2. All right. So I guess R2, you're going to be helping me uh, build this character pretty exclusively. All right. All right. So you uh, you dig elves. Let's uh, let's open this up to elves. Now the nice thing about the PHB um, is uh, oh, this is awesome. So I got to show this picture off. Oh, there. So I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer so you guys can see. So, for those of you that don't know, that is Drizzt Duarden. Uh, he is uh, uh, a character created by Ari Salvatore. Uh, very, very, very popular. Uh, he's a dark elf uh, ranger uh, and uses twin scimitars. Uh, very, very, very cool guy. His picture's in the PHB under elf. So, yeah. Um, one of the things I like about, um, the PHB is that you have your race and then they have sub races. So you can actually go and, uh, like we're going to choose race. So for, uh, the race, uh, there's a bunch of different things, but, uh, one of the biggest things is your dexterity score increases by two. Um, however, after you choose your race, you get to choose a sub race, which we have high elf, uh, wood elf, and dark elf. So we can choose any one of those races. Um, now, depending on which campaign setting that you're playing in, uh, sometimes choosing one of those races uh, changes things. Uh, high elves uh, in some uh, campaigns. Uh, like, um, uh, hmm, Faerun, uh, Forgotten Realms, where Drizzt is from, uh, the High Elves are sometimes returned, uh, referred to as Sun Elves or Gold Elves, and they have a very specific, uh, description and a very specific way that they act, and if you're going to be role-playing as the character, if you choose a High Elf, you might have to fall into that, or Dark Elves are, are a, uh, a really big thing. Dark Elves actually have um, uh, a, a large stigma in the Forgotten Realms where they're generally evil-aligned characters. Drizzt is one of the few uh, good-aligned uh, characters, and, and generally, he I, I believe he's neutral good as far as alignment is concerned. So, anyway, so I think... <laughs> Short swords and hand crossbows. I think I am just going to. That would be fun. Yeah, I think I'm going to just make. Um. I'm going to make him a wood elf because that makes the most sense. And drow is uh. It cre it it gives you a lot of difficulties to be perfectly honest uh, so now we've got class and level now we are going to do uh, stats um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about creating your stats because the characters that I create have to be legal for the D&D Adventure League um, yeah it, in general it is um, because uh, uh, there are rules as to how you can create your character in the D&D Adventure League, um, I'm going to use what's called an array, which is just a set uh, spread of numbers that you just uh, put wherever you think is best. So standard array uh, is 15, uh, 14, 13. Uh, let's go. <laughs> 12 
10, and 8. Now this is how I build my characters, is I start by putting the uh, array in there. And then what I do is I add the racial bonuses. So for the racial bonuses, I add 2 to my dexterity, so that brings it up to a 17. And I add 1 to my wisdom, which brings it up to a 15. Now for those of you that don't know, uh, the next thing we do is we finish, uh, uh, we figure out the modifiers. So if you have a 10, hey look, it's Elias. Hi Elias, how are you? We're building a wood elven ranger. So, depending on your score, uh, you uh, it will uh, create a modifier that you use for a lot of different things. Um, uh, if you have a 10 ability score, that's considered an average human. Like, your, your, your basic average human being would have straight 10s. 10 strength, 10 dex, 10 constitution. So anything above 10 makes you a little bit kind of superhuman. Anything below 10 and you're subpar. So, um, and that's what the modifiers are. So an 8 strength means I'm kind of a weakling physically. But 17 dexterity means I am super, super agile. Uh, constitution, I've got a bit of a constitution. Intelligence, I'm kind of average. Wisdom um, involves kind of street smarts and... Um, willpower, strength, uh, uh, kind of um, your ability, uh, faith is, is kind of built in that. Uh, wisdom tends to be a, a religious casting score, so uh, so that's going to be a plus two. Charisma is just how good you are at, at being liked, basically. Now, the way that it works is for every two points, your modifier goes up by one, which is why um, two points above ten. So at seventeen... I get a plus three. And at 15, I get a plus two. If I was to switch this, which is what I'm going to do, let's say that this was my 14 and this was my 15. Because remember, 15, 14, 13, uh, 12, 10, 8. What happens is because I get a plus one here, I can turn that into 16, which gives me a plus three. And then I get a plus two here, I can turn that into a 16, and that gives me a plus three. Um, so that's one of the things that I'll do is I'm a very uh, agile, uh, as this Wood Elven Ranger is a very agile ranger, uh, but he also has uh, a very strong inner uh, focus and, and a very strong willpower. So he's very strong-willed, very, very agile, not super strong, average intelligence, and he's kind of likable. Uh that's how I like to build my characters because I'm, I'm thinking about the role playing as well as what the character is going to be. So now we've got the race uh, and I'm going to go here. So we've got these are racial features. What do you get? Oh, this also gives me my speed. So my speed's 35 feet. Come back to the rest of that later. Uh... Put Mask of the Wild. Now, in general, on my character sheet, I won't explain any of this. I will just put down what it's called so that uh, um, I can just remember it. Because most of the stuff I'll have memorized. Dark Vision. Is Dark Vision? No, Dark Vision is one word, actually. Yeah, I know you don't like that it's one word. It is. Calm down. Uh, let's go keen senses and fey and sistry. Okay, so those are the features of my race. Um, so yeah. Oh, and my proficiency bonus is two. I'll explain that later. So that's what we've got. Now, I have class proficiencies, and I'm actually going to go back here. I don't do this until later, but there will be features because of my background, too. But I'll, I decide the background later. So, now we're going to go to a level 1 ranger. Got to go over to my PHP. That's a warlock. Went a little bit too far. Hi, rogue. Rogues are so cool. Uh, Ranger. Okay. Hi, Ranger. Do, do, do. 
Uh, hit points 10 plus my constitution modifier. So this is just boring stuff. I have 1d10 hit dice. Uh, I have 11 hit points at level 1. And I have a plus 3 to my initiative. Okay. Boring stuff. Uh, that's all stuff that uh, is useful once you're actually playing the character. Um, so that's all done. So at level 1, I get to pick a favored enemy. Oh, and I need to do strength and dexterity. So I have advantage on saving throws involving my strength. Yeah, the hit dice is uh, is a d10 for rangers. They've made them a little bit tougher in 5th edition. They can they can kind of wade through battle. Um, so I think it used to be a, d a d8. I am, uh, these are just pre-generated characters that when I run um, d, d encounters, I can hand to my players. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, this will be something that I can hand to players. Yeah, uh, hi, Tice, 8769. Uh, yeah, I actually have a, a barbarian and a cleric that I've, I've already built. So um, I may show you guys a couple of the other characters I built after we're finished with this one. All right, so um, I have advantage on that, and I think it's dex too, right? Strength and dexterity. Uh, I'll explain advantage later. Uh, choose three from animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, and survival. All right, I'm going to say that this guy has good survival skills. You know, he's a kind of a wanderer, you know, foresty type person, so he's good at survival. Um, he's got... He already has advantage on perception. Now I'm going to leave perception off. Where is investigation? What else can I do? Let's do nature. I like nature as a uh, as a ranger. I like I like nature. And then can I do acrobatics? Really? I can do athletics, but I can't do acrobatics. But acrobatics is cooler. Let's give him stealth. All right. So, um, I just picked some, uh, uh, skills that I'm actually trained in. These are just things that he's really, really good at. Uh, I picked stealth, so he's kind of stealthy. He's stealthy, wood elf. Uh, survival, he can survive on his own pretty well. And nature, because he's really into, like, nature. It's like, it's like his thing. It's, it's, it's natural. It's natural, guys. So, yeah. We've got that, that, that. I got, uh, those... I'll deal with equipment in a little bit. All right, so I get to pick a favored enemy. Very cool. Yeah, I don't think, uh, God, I'm trying to remember. I think I've got a Dwarven Cleric. I like, Dwarven Clerics are just cool. All right, so we're going to go, uh, for class features, I get favor, favored enemy. So one of the things that Rangers, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that, uh, Rangers have always been known for is they pick a particular enemy that they just freaking despise. Uh, and they uh, focus on it and become experts at killing that specific enemy. Um, so, all right. So we get to choose a type of favored enemy. Um, so let's see. Aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, Fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. So we can pick any one of those uh, to be our favorite enemy. And what that means is... Uh, basically, you get a... 
advantages um, when you try and check, uh, track them. You get an uh, uh, advantage on any time you're trying to remember information about them. And uh, apparently you learn a language they speak to. R2 says undead. Does anyone else have an opinion on a favored enemy? Root beer. I love root beer. I am such a huge fan of root beer. So I'll give it a um, little bit longer. See if anyone else has another opinion on uh, a favorite enemy. Do, 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 do. Okay. So undead sounds good. So we are an undead killer. <clears throat> now, again, while I'm building a character, I'm building their backstory as well. Um, a lot of the people that play this character won't ever know this, but this is how I build characters. So now it's like, all right, so it's a ranger that hunts undead. Wisconsin natives. <laughs> Yeah, surprisingly enough, in the Forgotten Realms, it just doesn't... It's not as useful to be a Wisconsin native hunter. Uh, and Packer fans... Dude, they did a... I saw a map. Packer fans are, like, one of the larger fan bases. I think... Uh, who is it? I think the Cowboys are larger, and I think there's, like, one or two other football teams that have a larger fan base. Uh, Packers are one of the biggest, so... Yeah... Um, and nobody likes the Jets, apparently. Everybody in New York has, uh, God, I can't remember who it is that they go for. Anyways, so yeah, nobody likes the Jets. Um, so yeah. Oh, and I don't get spellcasting until two, which doesn't matter. All right, so in my mind, this is a guy that, uh, again, natural, he, he, he belongs in the wild, and, uh, poor Texans. Yeah. Um, he's lived all of his life in the wild with his family. And, uh, for whatever reason, uh, a necromancer showed up in a forest one day. And, uh, actually went and, um, turned through experimentation stuff to become a better necromancer turned a few of his animal friends into uh, undead and he uh, this character was so appalled by that idea that now his soul anytime he sees anything undead he just instantly sees red and has to kill it so that's how my bizarre brain works so we have favorite enemy and then the other thing I get at level one is natural explorer which basically just means that I'm uh, uh, I'm really good in nature, which is literally that's it. Okay, so now we get to pick uh, weapons. So equipment, scale mail or leather armor. I get a, I have to go back to the equipment page and see what the advantage of scale mail is. I think I'm gonna go with leather. Oh, that would be the wrong spot. Come on, where's my... That's spellcasting. Hold, please. I've got feats. I've got everything except... There we go, okay. I have to bring up the items and the armor list. Uh, that's not what I want. That's weapons... Armor, scale mail. So I get. Yeah, we're not doing scale mail. We're going to do leather armor. So, um, with the PHB, uh, there's a couple different ways that you can build your equipment. They have a list of things where you can just choose. Like, I can choose between scale mail or leather armor. I'm just going to go with leather armor. So, we're going to go down here and I'm going to go. Now, leather armor is base... Is it base 12, I want to say? I have to go back here now. Damn it.
Come on. Backpack. Weapons. Okay. Leather. It's 11 plus dex. So that brings me to a 14 armor class. So, we get him leather armor. We will eventually, as he levels up and everything, probably upgrade him to studded leather because it's just better. Um, gives him a little bit better uh, defense. So, we have leather armor. Next up is going to be... Uh, I get to two short swords or two simple melee weapons. Now, short swords are cool-ish. I don't like them. I think they're kind of dumb. Um, uh, whenever I pick paired weapons and stuff like that, I tend to get a little bit more clever. Um, so, since uh, dual wielding is useful, 5th edition, uh, in order to dual wield, uh, the two weapons uh, have to have uh, what's called the light property. Uh, which means they're they're light enough weapons. Uh, yes, they are 1d6 damage. So, I tend to actually prefer uh, scimitars instead of short swords. Just because they look cool. So I'm going to go... So I have two scimitars. And then, there are things I can attack with. So, I'm going to fill this out. Attack bonus is 3 plus 2 is plus 5. Damage type is 1d6 plus 3. Slashing. Alright, so... The way this works, uh, scimitar is what's called a finesse weapon. Normally with melee weapons, uh, when you hit people with something, you use your strength. Urgh, me kill you. So normally I'd have to use my strength modifier, which would give me a minus one, which doesn't really help me. A scimitar is what's called a finesse weapon. Uh, it's something that you can be a little bit more creative with and you can use your dex mod for. That's why I put so many points in dexterity because that's going to be what he uses to kill things with. Um, so uh, the attack bonus is basically my mod plus my proficiency bonus. So that's a plus five. And then for damage, uh, each weapon has a damage dice. That's what the 1d6 is. For those of you that don't know what a d6 is, if you think of... a a die, you know, like you use in um, every board game uh, that uses dice, uh, or uh, in Yahtzee, that's a d6. It's, you know, it's a cube, it's got six faces. So you roll a d6, and then you add three, which is my dexterity mod. Uh, now, because he has an offhand one, scimitar, I'm going to go off. Uh, I still get the plus five to my attack roll. But, with your offhand weapon, because you're attacking with uh, uh, your hand that you're not as good in, you don't add the, uh, uh, you don't add your uh, ability modifier to damage. So, so if I go into fight, battle, I have, I can just pull out my two scimitars and start chopping people into tiny pieces. Kind of cool, right? All right. Next thing I get to put is Dungeoneering pack or an Explorer. I like the Dungeoneers pack. That's just random stuff that's useful. Uh, a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. So let's go. And then I get to go here. I think it's 15600 if I remember correctly. Give me two seconds to actually look that up. Longbow. There we go. What are you? 15600, yep. All right. So what those numbers after the longbow mean are uh, its range. A longbow, uh, its short range is 150 feet. 
its long range is 600. In 5th edition, what that means is any target that's within 150 feet, you just shoot normally. Anything between 150 and 600 feet away, you, uh, uh, you attack with what's called disadvantage, meaning you roll your attack twice and you take the lower of the two numbers. Uh, anything that's over 600 feet away, you can't attack. Um, you still do a plus five to your attack roll. This is actually one D eight plus three, and this is actually piercing damage. Every uh, attack has a damage type. Scimitars slice things, so that's slashing damage. Longbows poke things, so that's piercing damage. So, yeah. So those are my two groups of weapons. So this is my long-range weapon. These are my short-range weapons. So depending on what's going on, I might use both of them in a fight. I might use only one. I might use neither. There's a lot of different things you can do. So that's the end of my class stuff. Uh, now we need to pick a background. So backgrounds. Backgrounds are something uh, new-ish to 5th edition. Uh, they're kind of based on um, something that... Uh, Uh, where are you? I've completely forgotten. Uh, they're based kind of on something that uh, happened in 4th edition. That was a way to customize your characters. Um, so yeah, it's it's a way to help you roleplay your character. And it actually adds a few more skills and a few more uh, abilities and things like that. So we're going to pick a background for uh, this... Uh, character yeah they're not um, it's not uncommon and to be honest I like uh, the backgrounds you have here they actually have rules for creating a custom background uh, in here um, I'm not going to be doing any custom backgrounds just because again uh, these are characters that I have to use for um, uh, what do you call it uh, d, d Adventure League, and so I have rules that I have to follow if I want them to be legal characters. So, I am going to start reading backgrounds, and you guys let me know which background uh, interests you for this character. So, we have the Acolyte background, uh, the Charlatan, the Criminal, the Entertainer, the Folk Hero, the Guild Artisan, the Hermit, the Noble, the Outlander, the Sage, the Sailor, the soldier and the urchin so those are the different backgrounds uh, which ones do you guys like and I will allow you time to discuss amongst yourselves which ones sounded the coolest if you guys want to know more about them just ask in chat and I'll give you a little bit more description Um, uh, each one means something different, Elias. Uh, if there's a specific one uh, that you'd like to know more about, um, I can uh, tell you uh, more about it and everything like that. I just read the names just because it would take forever for me to read through. Because it's an entire chapter of the book uh, to read through all the information, and I don't have that much time to stream. Um so, uh, looks like I've got a vote for Criminal. I've got Grey Moon 50 Hello! Uh, is interested in the Outlander. Did I read Outlander? Did I forget that one? Yeah, I got Outlander. Okay. Good God. Anything particular about 
that I'm gonna I'm gonna actually check to see did my computer just freeze yes it did that was kind of fun all right I'm gonna go back Ooh, thank you Avalon rising all right so let's go back to okay I can move you down yeah, uh, the reason it's a whole ch really, I'm not sure. It's it's hard to see, um, it's hard to tell sarcasm through chat. So I'm not sure if Elias is being sarcastic. So if you're being sarcastic, Elias, stop, because nobody likes a smartass. Uh, so uh, we've got basically we've got criminal and Outlander. Uh, I need a tiebreaker. Who would like to break the tie? Criminal, Outlander. I guess I can. I can probably talk about them. So I've got Outlander uh, opened up. Uh, uh, the description here: You grew uh, up in the wilds, far from civilization and the comfort of town and technology. You witnessed the migration of herds larger than forests, survived weather more extreme than any city dweller could comprehend, and enjoyed the solitude of being the only thinking creature for miles in any direction. The wilds are in your blood, whether you were a nomad, an explorer, a recluse, a hunter-gatherer, or even a marauder. Even in places where you don't know the specific features of the terrain, you know the ways of the wild. So that's kind of the basics of the Outlander. Uh, or, what was the other one? It was Criminal. I'm going to go back to Criminal. Criminal, Criminal, Criminal. Hi, Criminal. Acolyte. Criminal. You are an experienced criminal with a history of breaking the law. You have spent a lot of time among other criminals and still have contacts within the criminal underworld. They use the word criminal in here a lot. You're far closer than most people to the world of murder, theft, violence that pervades the underbelly of civilization, and you have survived up to this point by flouting the rules and regulations of society. So yeah. Come on, guys. Give me a, give me a tiebreaker or I get to choose. Do, do. Do, do. I still have no idea if uh, Elias was just being cocky. I'm out of root beer. Neither of these. You like Outlander. Okay. Well, there is more customization built in. So, we're going Outlander. Outlander! Outlander. Not cocky. Yes, you do, actually, uh, Grey Moon. Um, so the background gives you skills, and then uh, you also get the skills from your uh, uh, class. Most races won't give you skills. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, choosing a background uh, is almost essential because it gives you more skills. Um, so I get Athletics and Survival. Um... I really don't care about athletics. Uh, and survival, technically, I have because of my class. So what I do in this case is I actually go back to the class and I choose another one. Uh, just so I can take full advantage of uh, all the uh, skills I can. The more skills you have, the more cool stuff you can do. All right, Ranger. So, do, 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 do. all right. I think I'm just gonna add perception because it's really, really useful. Yep, and that's what I'm doing right now because I just, like I said, I, I just, I added perception because I got survival from the background, and that's something that I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do generally. Is after I choose my skills, uh, if I have a background that gives me one of those skills, I just choose another one. Um, and that tends to be good. So now I get a origin. So uh, the origin is basically, again, it's another way for you to customize your character. Uh, I can choose, uh, and this is just lore. Like, this doesn't do anything as far as game mechanics. This is just background lore to help, again, flesh out your character. So you have 
Forester, Trapper, Homesteader, Guide, Exile or Outcast, Bounty Hunter, Pilgrim, Tribal Nomad, Hunter Gatherer, or Tribal Marauder. Just because I like it, I am going to go with Bounty Hunter. So I am an my background is Outlander Bounty Hunter because I like that. I think that's cool. And I think it kind of uh, fits into this. Um, maybe uh, this guy, because again, favorite enemy is undead. Maybe he takes out bounties exclusively on magic users, um, specifically looking for anyone who's ever studied necromancy because he really hates undead. See? Kind of cool, right? So we've got that. Uh, I have a feature called Wanderer, uh, which basically means, yeah, basically it means when I'm in nature, I am awesome. I remember maps, I uh, can find food and water for me and my buddies without too much difficulty, so that's kind of used useful. Uh, and then, we have these things. I have not talked about them yet. Oh, I can go here. I can go background there, Outlander, and I can just go background. I can delete that. Bounty Hunter! And my feature is Wanderer. Okay, so that's cool there. Um, so, Bounty Hunter, feature Wanderer, and alignment, seeing as I can do this anytime. So, the alignment system is something that and ds had forever. Um, it's basically set up on a 3x3 uh, three three grid. You have two, uh, I guess, two axes, axes, however you want to do it. You have your good and evil, and then you have lawful versus chaotic. And so depending on where you are, you can be, you have lawful good, uh, this is backwards. So you have lawful good way up here, uh, chaotic evil way down here, and then everything in between. And the things in the middle are neutral. Um. <laughs> uh, I could go chaotic neutral. So chaotic good basically means that you're a generally a good person. Um but you really don't care about rules or anything like that. You will do whatever you feel uh, is the best. So sometimes that means that you know you're you're you know working with the magistrate to capture the bad guy. Sometimes that means you're breaking somebody out of jail to uh, help them. If we went chaotic neutral, another word for chaotic neutral would be crazy. Chaotic neutral characters are really weird to play because they're unbelievably they're just completely nuts they will do things that don't make any sense simply because they're all about chaos um it doesn't matter if it's good or bad they, they don't have a preference as to either they're just nuts um i have a i have a barbarian that i made that was uh chaotic neutral and he's a he's a fun character to play because he's crazy absolutely crazy um yeah, I guess unpredictable. All right, so we can do this. We will. He will be the crazy bounty hunter. Crazy mavericks. So yeah, we have our, our maverick. Now we have these four boxes here. These are other things that you can use to help divine your character. Um, and uh, they actually give you suggestions uh, in the PHB. I'll show you guys the paper. Uh, so that's the Outlander picture. Kind of cool. And I'm not sure if I can actually get the text. This green stuff here, that's all the different things. They actually will give you suggestions for each one of the uh, things. So I'm going to just choose a couple here. Oh, I like this. So, as a personality trait, I have this. Oh, it's hard to read this when I have that in the way.
Later, R2. All right, so these are things that kind of define your character. So, for this guy, I'm always picking things up, absently fiddling with them, and sometimes accidentally breaking them. And the way that I would read this with the fact that we're chaotic neutral is the sometimes not only modifies the act of breaking, like he doesn't always break them, uh, but sometimes he does, but it also modifies the accidentally. So sometimes he breaks them accidentally, sometimes he breaks them on purpose. It just kind of depends on his mood. So now we're going to go with ideals. And this one will be probably the best. So that kind of fits uh, with... Uh, our chaotic neutral guy. Life is like the seasons, in constant change, and we must change with it. Again, very kind of chaotic ideal. Uh, bond. I like this one because we've already kind of. Uh, we've already kind of brought this up. So we've already kind of talked about, you know, not a big fan of Undead in general. Undead did some bad stuff to his home, so we don't like him. And then Flaws. This is so... This fits so, so well. Uh, Elias might uh, might know something about that one right there. Um, so, yeah, he's got a bit of a drinking problem. Chaotic neutral. Kind of fits. Um, so, yeah, uh, that basically uh, is the end except for coming up with a name. So, again, I leave it to my amazing audience. Um Again, this is a Wood Elven Ranger. Does anyone have a name? And no, Elias, just ignore my bad spelling, okay? Just just ignore it. It's it, Just stop. So what do we want to name him, guys? When we're doing that, I should probably fill this in. So this is plus one. Plus one. Is Saturn? Neutralist. Yeah, so do you want to, what do we want to name him, guys? What do we want to name our wonderful Wood Elven Ranger? Come on, I need a name. Boom, boom. Uh, let's go here real quick. Anybody?
anybody have a name? Name at all. <laughs> all right, looks like I'm going to be naming this guy. Let's go here. All right, so name, elven name. Uh, I tend to, when I name Grey Moon Thunder Lily, oh, when I tend to name my elves, uh, for whatever reason, I think like elf names have Ys in them. They just do. I, th I think it's a very elven thing. So, so Therwin sounds fairly elven. Yeah, I know it's not a real word. Uh, and I, I tend to use... Watching the master at work. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to use a lot of soft vowels. So Therwin, very soft vowels. It, it kind of rolls off the tongue fairly well. I think that's uh, a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent name. So, yeah. That literally is... Uh, the entire like this character is actually ready to play. Uh, I have everything I need to to start it up. I've got all that. I've got. I probably should put languages and stuff that he knows. I really don't care at this particular point in time. Uh, I'll I'll put them in later. Uh, I should put at least languages. I know elvish common. Building a warlock. Woohoo! Warlocks. Uh, and then I can I could put other proficiencies in there, but I really don't care right now. So yeah, that's the entirety of building a uh, character. Now at level two, uh, and I always like to do this um, is ranger spellcasting ability is wisdom spell save DC would be eight plus five would be thirteen and plus five. All right, so literally this. Uh, Go away. Stop it. Wait, wait. Stop it. I'm going to do real quick because I'm going to... Well, I'm not going to save it on here because then you guys would see all the other crap I got on my computer. Um, why are you doing that? Stop it. I don't want you... Go away. There we go. Okay. I didn't like that little screen. So that's it, guys. That's like, uh, that is everything. Um, so yeah, that's that's an entire character. And I could literally print this out and uh, take this to the table and just start playing with this character. So um, I know it took a while for us to do it here because I talked about everything while we do it. I can actually build an entire character probably in about mm, anywhere between like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, completely from scratch. Um, so, yeah, it's actually really, really easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm actually more worried uh, about the fact that uh, <laughs> with how many crazy people are on the internet, if I start, start showing uh, file path names and stuff like that on the stream, um, I'm more worried that someone would get the bright idea to like target my computer and you know try and steal stuff off of, off of it. So I realize that it's probably a crazy thing to be afraid of. Um, but yeah, I just don't like that. So anyway, so that is everything. Um, what I am going to do right now, I'm going to actually minus this down. I'm just going to leave that there, and I'm actually going to remove that. Uh, I am 100%. Uh, so for the last couple minutes here, I figured I would show you guys a couple of the other characters that I have pre-made. Uh, let's go here. All right. And I'm actually going to show you... Can I not show... Oh, that's why. 
Yeah, it might help if I actually open it up. Okay. So, I'm actually going to show you some of the... I have some level 6 characters that have a lot cooler stuff. So, let me know which one uh, you guys would like. I've got uh, Aaron, who's a wood elven cleric. Bairn, who's a mountain dwarf paladin. Fong, who's a human monk. Gilder, who's a gnomish druid. Gordrak, who's my crazy dwarven barbarian. Uh, Kirwin, who's a half-elven bard. And Torment, uh, who's a tiefling warlock. Which one of those would you guys like to see for the end of my stream? Fong, <laughs> My monk. Uh, the Barbarian is uh, Gordrak. Uh, he's uh, my Dwarven Barbarian. Uh, Alright, I will I will do both of them real quick. I'm going to open up uh, both of them and I will show you them. So let's start with, since Elias was first, we will start with... There we go. Make it a little bit smaller so you guys can actually see. All right, so Beifong is my human monk. Uh, he's a hermit. Uh, he's, uh, again, he's a dex-based guy. Uh, he uses nunchucks. Uh, he also can punch things. Uh, and he has some darts that he can throw. Because he's level 6, he has a, a lot more stuff he can do. Uh, he is one of those people that always has something to say. Uh, you know, kind of along the route of Confucius say... And it gets really, really freaking annoying. Um, so, sleight of hand is wrong. He should have a plus four on that. Um, so, yeah. Morning stuff there. One of the things that um, uh, monks can do is they have this key. Uh, so, I have one, two, three. I have six key points that I can use. Yeah, I know. Uh... He is elemental, though. Uh, there's a couple different paths you can choose as a monk, and so I uh, chose the Way of the Four Elements. So he has uh, a couple... Uh, basically, he has Fangs of the Fire Snake, which basically gives him two fire whips that he can, like, throw at people, uh, and then Fist of Unbroken Air, which lets him shoot, like, a gust of uh, air at somebody and, and hurt them. So that's really cool. Um... And that's that. And then it's a monk, so he really doesn't have any spells. Um, but yeah, so this is my monk, and he's really cool. And he has 45 hit points and 15 armor class. And he wears next to nothing. Um, and yeah, he's got nunchucks. Like, just cool, because he has nunchucks. Uh, so that's him. He's a neutral good. Uh, so yeah, that's Beifong. Let's get rid of him. And yeah. Uh, we will just minus that down. And we will remove that. Yes. And then I will do this one more. Uh, passive uh, perception is basically uh, you add 10 to whatever their perception score is. And that's... Uh, like, if they were just wandering around, what they passively would notice. Um, I don't generally tend to use passive perception a lot in the games I run. Um, but uh, it's something you can do. Like, if they're walking through a dungeon and they're not looking for something, every so often you can go, well, what's everybody's passive perception? And then based on their passive perception, you can kind of figure out what they would naturally notice. Um, so someone with a really high passive perception... Uh, would notice really minute details that someone else wouldn't. So, uh, I want window capture, and this is going to be 
Gore Drac. And that's my Barbarian. Just like before we do this. Uh, wisdom. Uh, uh, perception is uh, wisdom based. So as you can see, I have the perception stat right here. Uh, so it's based off wisdom because he's trained in it. Ooh, I have that wrong. Because he's trained in it. Uh, that's where he gets a passive uh, perception uh, of uh, 13. So this is Gordrak, my crazy barbarian. Um, he's an outlander, so same thing we were talking about. Uh, his personality trait was, I was, in fact, raised by wolves. Cool. Uh, same thing there. Um, so, uh, barbarians can rage, basically. Uh, so they go crazy and get a boost to damage and all this other stuff. I can rage four times a day. Um... I chose the path of the Berserker, so I can rage even more. Yeah. Uh, he has a great axe that does 1d12 damage. He's got a couple of hand axes and a javelin that he can throw. And, uh, yeah, he's just plain fun. He's chaotic neutral. He's completely nuts. Um... And uh, violence is my answer to almost any challenge. Really describes the character well. Like anything, anytime something happens, oh, I'll hit it with my axe. Because that's how you fix everything. Um, so he's a lot of fun to play. Again, barbarians really have no spells, so this is kind of worthless. Um, and uh, yeah, so he's fun. He's a cool character. Uh, in level 6, you get a lot more cool stuff at level 6 than you do. You can see Barbarians have high hit points in general. They have a, He has a d12 hit dice, so he gets a lot of hit points. He can take a lot of damage. Um, and he gets an extra attack, too. So he gets to attack twice with his massive great axe. So, kind of cool. We'll minus that down. So, yeah. Um, that is going to be all for me today, guys. Um... Thank you guys for showing up. I wasn't sure how well this was going to go. Um, I wasn't sure if people were going to be uh, interested in watching me build a character or not. Um, I might do this again. I technically still have three more characters I need to build. And, um, yeah, it's... Uh, I love creating characters. Uh, like I said, that's the ninth character I've created for 5th edition. Um... And uh, each one of the other eight that I've created, I have a level six version of them that I uh, built uh, for a game I was running a couple weekends ago. So I, I love building characters. It's a ton of fun. Um, so if you guys want me to do this again, let me know. Uh, obviously, if you're watching it live, let me know in the comments uh, or uh, in the chat. Uh, if you're watching this on my channel, leave comments below telling me if you guys would like to... Uh, see me uh, build another character uh, or watch me live um, if you guys haven't done it yet uh, feel free to follow me here on Twitch uh, you'll get a notice uh, yeah definitely Grey Moon uh, you'll get a notice anytime that I stream uh, so that you don't have to miss any stream I generally will stream on Tuesdays uh, with my job being crazy um, it varies as to what time of day I stream I had to work an opening shift today so uh, I streamed late at night. Um, next week I may have to work a closing shift, which means I don't get, I don't leave the store until after midnight. Um, I'm not going to come home and then stream for an hour at two, three in the morning. Uh, so I would probably stream in the morning that day. But I generally stream on Tuesdays. Um, so yeah, uh, if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel, that's where I uh, load all this stuff up. It's youtube.com slash trainerjody. There is a link uh, underneath my uh, Twitch channel that will take you right to uh, my personal channel. I, uh, I upload this and then I, I do what's called random vlogging uh, twice a week where I just talk to the camera about whatever is on my mind. Uh, so that's fun. Definitely check out, subscribe to the channel, things like that. Uh, and anytime you want to know what's happening with me, uh, I announce everything on Twitter. I am at Trainer Jody. 
Uh, so follow me on Twitter and you will know everything that I am doing. Um, uh, so yeah, if you really uh, enjoy this, you think I'm a cool person, you'd like to help me keep creating content, uh, you can always check out my Patreon page, uh, become one of my patrons. Uh, when uh, I get a chance to, you get to see my patrons-only vlogs where I talk about stuff that um, I'm not ready to talk about uh, with the general population, get to find out cool stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I can also announce uh, on my YouTube channel, um, I'm getting close to 10,000 uh, views on my channel. When I hit 10,000 views, I'm going to be doing a giveaway to all of my subscribers. So feel free to subscribe, and then uh, when I hit 10,000 views, uh, you guys can uh, be a part of the giveaway. Um, uh, I haven't quite decided what I'm giving away yet. Um, I will be taking suggestions through Twitter as to what you guys would like to see me give away. So, again, that is all for me this week. Thank you so much to everybody that showed up this week. Um, <laughs> thank you, Elias. Um, and, uh, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow for some random vlogging. All right. Bye-bye.